Hello, it's one o'clock. Welcome to BBC News. The Queen is under medical supervision after doctors became concerned for her health. Buckingham Palace has released a statement within the last hour. It says, following further evaluations this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended that she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Well, the Prime Minister Liz Truss, who was only appointed by the Queen at Balmoral on Tuesday, and these are images we have from that meeting, Liz Truss has said the whole country will be deeply uh, concerned by the news. My thoughts and the thoughts of people across the UK are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. Well, let's uh, bring in our political editor, Chris Mason. And Chris, um, in the Commons, they were discussing um, measures to help people with energy bills. And then this news came through and um, uh, a lot of messages already coming in from senior political leaders. That's right, Ben. Yeah, you could see, you could feel, you could hear uh, the, the tone of real concern uh, amongst parliamentarians as news was shared uh, amongst the front benches during the statement from the Prime Minister about her support for energy bills. Notes were being passed to the Prime Minister, uh, to the Deputy Labour leader, uh, with the Labour leader at the time uh, on his feet, and indeed to the Speaker of the House. And you could very clearly and quickly uh, see uh, and feel that shift in tone uh, and concern. In addition to the statement that you mentioned there from the Prime Minister in, in the last couple of minutes reflecting the deep concern uh, of all in the country at the news from Buckingham Palace at uh, this lunchtime, uh, we also have uh, responses now from the First Minister of Scotland and indeed from the Labour leader, uh, Sir Keir Starmer. I'll just bring those uh, to you. So the Labour leader uh, saying, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace uh, this afternoon. Uh, my thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. And to just bring you, as I just mentioned a second ago, the uh, reaction from the First Minister of Scotland, the leader of the uh, Scottish National Party, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, has said all of us uh, are feeling profoundly concerned uh, at reports of Her Majesty's health. Uh, my thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. Uh, Chris, we are just hearing that Prince Charles is now with the Queen at Balmoral. And the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, um, has tweeted in response to that statement about the Queen's health. She said, all of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. So uh, Prince Charles is now... Uh, at Balmoral with the Queen. We can speak now to the Royal Commentator and former Buckingham Palace Press Secretary Dickie Arbiter who uh, joins me on the line and Dickie clearly concerned then about the Queen's health. Yes there is concern about the Queen's health. When Buckingham Palace reads the statement uh, as they have done that she is under medical uh, supervision and there is concern I think we all have to be concerned. Uh, the Queen cancelled a number of engagements. Uh, she has had a mobility issue. She is frail. She is 96. So, yes, I think there's concern not just for the palace, but now throughout the country. Yeah, and we gather she had to pull out of a virtual Privy Council meeting yesterday. Um, it had been a, a pretty busy week for the Queen, obviously politically, um, with those audiences, with the outgoing Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the incoming Prime Minister Liz Truss at Balmoral. Yes, they would have taken uh, a bit of a toll on the Queen. As I said a moment ago, mobility issue is not something to be sniffed at, and it would have taken all her strength to remain upright, uh, to have uh, Boris Johnson and his resignation and then to meet with, with Liz Truss, the incoming and new Prime Minister. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the cancellation of the virtual Privy Council meeting where new government ministers would be sworn in, that had to be postponed. And now we know that uh, the Prince of Wales is at uh, Balmoral. 
and that Prince William is flying up there. So, obviously, great concern, and we just need to hope that... Uh, I'm not suggesting for a moment of false alarm, but that, that the Queen does pull through, that she is comfortable, as we're told. Uh, I hope she remains comfortable and uh, back on her feet in due course. Yes, the statement does say the Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. She has, of course, been scaling back um, her royal duties recently. She has been scaling back. A lot of uh, them have fallen on the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge, quite rightly so. Uh, at 96, she can't be expected to do everything. But she has performed her constitutional role in accepting the resignation of the Prime Minister and uh, audience with the incoming Prime Minister, kissing hands as the formal appointment took place. But Privy Council meeting couldn't take place. And uh, scaling back, I think we, we all accept that at 96, quite rightly so. But a very difficult time for the family, difficult time for the country. And we can just hope that... Um, Yes, she is under medical supervision. She is comfortable. She remains comfortable and pulls through. And we saw that picture of her with, with Liz Truss at Balmoral when she was asking her to form a government, appointing her prime minister. And, and she had that trademark radiant smile, didn't she? She did have that trademark radiant smile. It, it, it's always been there. Whenever we've seen her, we saw her on the balcony during the platinum jubilee. Um, she couldn't quite believe her eyes. It's almost been tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that had gathered at Buckingham Palace. But there was that trademark radiant smile. But I think everybody will agree, yes, she, she did look somewhat frail. And uh, it would have cost a lot of strength to carry that, uh, that through uh, the day before yesterday. Uh, Dickie Arbiter, many thanks. And I'm joined here in the studio by our health editor, Hugh Pym. So we've had this quite brief statement um, from the palace about um, the Queen's health. Following further evaluation this morning, they say the Queen's doctors are concerned for her health. They have recommended she remains under medical supervision. Uh, but they also do say the Queen remains comfortable. Yes, Ben, I think what we should be clear about here is that Buckingham Palace very rarely, if ever, comments on the Queen's health. So to say in this statement that the doctors are concerned and that she's under medical supervision at Balmoral indicates that the degree of seriousness we're talking about here. Yes, she's said to be comfortable and at Balmoral, so there's maybe not an, an emergency right now, but those concerns by doctors which we're being told about tells you really uh, the degree of anxiety, I think, there is now about the Queen's health. Of course, as we've been hearing, she had to pull out of that virtual Privy Council, which just would have involved being at Balmoral and, and, and doing it via a video link. It was a very tiring day the previous day, uh, saying uh, to Boris Johnson uh, at the meeting, uh, bidding him farewell and appointing Liz Truss Prime Minister as leader of the largest party in the Commons. And we know she's got mobility issues. She was unable to uh, attend the Braemar gathering uh, near Balmoral uh, recently. Uh, her appearances during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations were very limited. She didn't go to the uh, Thanksgiving service, but she did go to the Royal Windsor Horse Show and Paddington Station more recently to see the opening of the Elizabeth Line, suggesting that mobility is an issue, but mm. certainly at times this year she has been able to, uh, under a planned programme, attend certain events. She did have COVID earlier this year, so there may be you know, ongoing weakness as there is for many people who've, who've had COVID. But mobility is what we've always been told about and uh, that has clearly taken a bit of a turn for the worse right now. And we don't know mm. any more about any further medical treatment being needed in this situation. All yeah. we know is that she is comfortable at Balmoral. Yes, when we have had medical bulletins about her, they have usually focused on what the palace has called ongoing mobility issues. Yes, so the fact that isn't mentioned suggests that there is something underlying there that is causing the concern to doctors and needing the supervision, a uh, condition maybe we haven't been told about. In previous decades, she's had operations on uh, for knee issues and um, she suffered from back pain. So we, we simply don't know what, what the underlying situation is there, but clearly she is frail. She is 96 and people of that age, uh, do struggle with their health, uh, do have issues with mobility, back and, and knee trouble. So we simply don't know the, uh, the real situation at this point, other than the degree of concern clearly amongst doctors and the fact that members of the royal family are travelling to Balmoral to be with her.
Hugh, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. That's Hugh Pym, our health editor. We can also speak to our correspondent, uh, Damien Grammaticus. Um, and a lot of political figures, as we've been saying, Damien, have been uh, sending messages. The latest, just actually the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Sir Ed Davey, just uh, saying the whole nation's thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family as we all hope and pray for her full recovery. And we've had similar messages from the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Yes, that's right. Uh, we have. And, and uh, all of those political leaders were in Parliament just down the road when they heard the news here from Buckingham Palace. Of course, they were involved in the debate that's been going on this morning about the government's energy package as the news came through. And we heard very quickly that sponsors, you say, from the Prime Minister, first of all, Liz Truss, uh, and then the others. Liz Truss saying, I think you were hearing a few minutes ago, the whole country will be deeply concerned uh, by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. She went on to say her thoughts and the thoughts of people across the UK will be with Her Majesty, uh, the Queen and her family at this time. That was echoed by, uh, as you're saying, the Leader of the Opposition, Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, he also said very similar words across the whole of the country, uh, along with the whole of the country. I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. He uh, extended his uh, wishes, he said, for her uh, recovery, hoping for her return. And Sir Ed Davey, last few minutes, saying uh, the whole nation's thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family, as we all hope and pray for a full recovery. Mark Drakeford uh, also saying uh, similar things. Uh, so a real concern for the political, uh, from the political leadership, obviously, for her health and recovery and it extends beyond that too because of course she is the head of state uh, of another 14 nations uh, and head of the commonwealth too and uh, uh, damien as uh, we were just reflecting with our health editor hugh pym we haven't had many um bulletins about her health um in in the last few months or years but the the, the just the very fact we've had this statement today saying that the queen's doctors are concerned for her majesty's health and have recommended she stays under medical supervision. Just the issuing of that statement obviously does raise concerns. Yes, of course it does. Uh, and the political establishment had known, uh, of course, about uh, concerns about or issues with the, the Queen's health. We knew, we saw this week uh, those uh, unusual arrangements that were made uh, when Liz Truss. Uh, became Prime Minister. We, the Queen obviously remaining at Balmoral, uh, not doing what she had done previously for uh, the other Prime Ministers that she had uh, invited here at the Palace to form a government. This time, of course, we saw Boris Johnson first fly up to Balmoral on Tuesday morning to offer his resignation, uh, followed by Liz Truss, uh, who the Queen invited or asked to form a government at that point. Uh, that was, as we know, in order to facilitate uh, the Queen and her with her mobility, ongoing mobility issues, uh, which is why all the arrangements were, were changed. Uh, Liz Truss became the 15th Prime Minister uh, the, who the Queen uh, has seen under her reign. Uh, and those, of course, those arrangements reflected those uh, concerns or those ongoing issues with the Queen's health. So this is something that uh, the political parties and the political leadership have been, of course, watching and aware of. And, of course, uh, those meetings with Boris Johnson and Liz Truss at Balmoral earlier this week... Um, receiving for an audience the outgoing Prime Minister, then appointing Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister, asking her to form a government. Just really a, an illustration of the longevity of her extraordinary reign, that this was the 15th Prime Minister I think she'd, she'd appointed. That's right, yes, 15 Prime Ministers going all the way back to Winston Churchill, uh, I think was the first, uh, that the Queen ha has had in her time. Uh, and uh, Liz Truss, the very latest, just on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, so extraordinary uh, political events she has witnessed, of course, uh, and been head of state, guiding Prime Ministers through that time. Uh, Liz Truss just on Tuesday then immediately came back and has, has obviously been, as we all know, in the process of forming her government, in the process of laying out her, her policies today as this news came through. Uh, and as I was saying, of course, the Queen plays an important political role, not just here, but uh, in many other nations as well.
Uh, Damien, thank you very much indeed. That's Damien Grammaticus, our correspondent at Buckingham Palace. Just to recap, if you are just joining us, that news from Buckingham Palace, who have issued a statement saying, Fur following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The statement does also say the Queen remains comfortable and at, Bal ba and at Balmoral, and we gather that um, Prince Charles is um, at Balmoral as well with with the Queen. Uh, let's talk to Stephen Bates, who's a former royal correspondent at The Guardian newspaper and also author of Royalty Inc. Um, and of course, a, a statement like this from B Buckingham Palace today inevitably does raise concern about um, the Queen's health. Well, it certainly does. It's a much more serious statement from the palace than uh, previously. Um, it seems to be more than uh, the mobility issues that they've been uh, talking about over the recent months. Of course, she is now um, 96, and uh, at that stage of life, um, anything uh, that uh, causes health concerns is important and um, serious. And uh, as we've been reflecting, of course, she has recently been scaling back some of her duties, but not, not all by any means. And, and in fact, it was a busy week this week, politically, with... Um, with the appointment of the new Prime Minister, as we were just uh, discussing there, the 15th Prime Minister of her reign. Yes, indeed. I mean, uh, Liz Truss, uh, born in 1975, 101 years after Winston Churchill, her first Prime Minister. So there's a considerable longevity between uh, uh, Prime Ministers and also, of course, because of the nature of her reign, which is the longest in, in uh, British history. Um, she is scaling back. She's had to scale back. And the fact that she didn't come back to London from Balmoral was also an indication of um, uh, uh, the limited uh, amount of work and she can do. She's still been going through her red boxes, but public engagements have been uh, much fewer and further between. And uh, now it's evident that um, the, the outgoing prime minister and the incoming prime minister uh, have to go to her wherever she is, and it's likely to be Balmoral. Um, and she's also not attended a Privy Council meeting, uh, uh, which was liable to be quite important at the start of a new prime ministerial uh, term. Uh, so uh, I think the, there are real concerns about her health, uh, as there would be anyone of that age, but um, specifically and especially the Queen, um, at this very crucial political juncture in, uh, in the country's life. And as we were reflecting earlier with our health editor, I mean, the, the previous statements about her health have concentrated very much on, on her mobility issues, as they've always described them. Yes, and the fact that they're not describing this as a mobility problem, um, but as a cause for concern, uh, indicates that it's something more than uh, just being able to get about. Um, and, uh, of course, they're very cagey as... Uh, palace officials always are about uh, members of the royal family's health, particularly the Queen's, and particularly um, at this age of Her Majesty. Um, and we gather Prince Charles has now travelled to Balmoral to be with the Queen, and, and the Duke of Cambridge, according to Kensington Palace, also travelling to Balmoral. Yes, and that's another indication that uh, things are getting serious. Uh, uh, under normal circumstances, um, the royal family have stiff upper lips and um, don't tend to visit each other when they're when they're ill. So um, one wonders of, about the significance of that. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stephen Bates, uh, for being with us. I just want to read out a message that we've heard, heard from the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, who says, "My prayers and the prayers of people across." The Church of England and the nation are with Her Majesty the Queen today. This is Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, in a message that's just been released. May God's presence strengthen and comfort Her Majesty, her family, and those who are caring for her at Balmoral. Uh, well, we can talk now to the former BBC Royal Correspondent, Richard Sumner, who uh, joins us on the line. Richard, thank you very much uh, for being with us. 
and um, I'm sure you're as concerned as everybody else by this uh, statement from the palace. Yes, because the whole policy of, of the palace has always been understatement. Um, I've always suspected that possibly there was more than a mobility problem concerned here because um, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility for the Queen, for instance, to use a wheelchair as the present Pope is now doing on numerous occasions. Um, I've always suspected that possibly, uh, along with advancing age, there may be other uh, more complicated medical problems. When you're 96, of course, you can't expect to have the health of a 25-year-old. Uh, hopefully, this is a passing storm that can, that can be um, overcome. But I, I think, judging from the um, careful wording of the palace, that something serious possibly is, 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 is going on here. Uh, the fact that the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge are going up to Balmoral is, is, is a sign. I remember years ago on the radio hearing Barbara Carton talking about old age and she said you either age from the neck up or the neck down and clearly the Queen has aged from the neck down. Mm. People who have seen her say she's mentally as, as, as sharp as a tack, bright as she ever was and in fact very interested still in everything. She's not becoming um, worn out or anything but her body is giving out on her um, quite in what way or how, how badly, we, we aren't really being told. But clearly something quite serious is starting. Although we were also reflecting earlier on about um, that smile that we saw when she, uh, when she met Liz Truss at Balmoral. Um, that smile we've got so used to uh, when she was asking the new Prime Minister uh, to form a government. I, I don't want to sound like Jeremiah. I love to see the smile, but I thought she looked very frail. I have to say I got rather a shock when I opened the newspaper and saw that picture. She, she, for the first time, I think it's the first time I've thought that, I thought she looked rather frail. So let's hope, whatever the problem is, that she gets the care she needs. And, uh, of course, the nation holds its breath when a lady of this age is ill, uh, when she's the queen. And, and we must all hope and pray that she, she can recover. Yes, and, and, and of course Buckingham Palace don't issue these sort of statements lightly. No, they don't. Uh, it's, it's a policy of understatement all the way through, and details are sparse. Uh, but of course the trouble with that is um, that if you keep the details sparse, rumour begins to abound, and people possibly may be making more of it than it actually is. There is always that possibility. But um, we, we, we feed on the sparse details we've been given. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious something more serious is happening because the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge wouldn't be going to Balmoral mm. unless, unless it were so. But we have to just wait and see what they say. Uh, Richard Sumner, thank you very much uh, indeed. Let's just recap some of those messages um, in which many people have been... Uh, saying that their thoughts and prayers are very much with the Queen at the moment. Um, starting off with Liz Truss, the newly appointed Prime Minister, um, who was at Balmoral just the other day, of course, uh, being asked to form a government by the Queen. Um, Liz Truss saying the whole country will be deep, deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. And also we've heard from Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, along with the rest of the country. I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. And I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. Of course, both Keir Starmer and the new Prime Minister have been in the Commons um, debating the government's new policy on energy bills um, when this news came through. And... Uh, also, we heard from the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. All of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and uh, all of the royal family at this time. And just to uh, repeat that Prince Charles has gone to Balmoral to be at uh, the Queen's side and Prince William, we understand, is on his way there as well. Uh, we've heard from Mark Drakeford. Um, the First Minister of Wales, saying that he too is concerned to hear the news from Buckingham Palace. I send my best wishes to Her Majesty and her family on behalf 
of the people of Wales. And after we had that statement from Buckingham uh, Palace, uh, the Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, interrupted proceedings um, in the Chamber of the House of Commons to send the very best wishes of everybody in Parliament to the Queen. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. I'm going to take no more, just to, if there is anything else, we will update the House accordingly. Thank you. So Lindsay Hoyle there. Let's just uh, reflect a little bit more now on that statement we've had from the Palace with our health editor, uh, Hugh Pearman. Of course, everybody will be poring over this medical bulletin from the Palace um, in as much detail as they can. Well, indeed, Ben, it's just a few lines, but it is very revealing because, as we've been hearing, Buckingham Palace very, very rarely, if ever, comments directly on the Queen's health. And we're told that doctors are concerned about her condition and she's under medical supervision at Balmoral, although she is comfortable. Now, comfortable can cover a range of different possibilities. I think the fact that mobility issues are not directly mentioned is important. Of course, up until now, we've been told the Queen has got ongoing mobility problems, issues, and that's caused her to cancel various uh, engagements, including the Thanksgiving service at the Platinum uh, Jubilee and, and the state opening of Parliament, but it's always been mobility issues. What we don't know is whether they have got worse or whether there's an underlying issue, an underlying condition here, which doctors are now concerned about. We simply don't know, and it's very difficult to speculate, but we should remember she's 96. Anyone of that age is bound to be frail, uh, bound to have difficulty maybe sitting and standing at times. And I think that, that's been the problem in recent months for the Queen, that going to certain events involving walking around uh, have been very difficult, but maybe it's a bit easier to do them in a more limited way. But the fact she pulled out of that virtual Privy Council yesterday involving a down the line on, on video, I think suggested that there was something of concern at that point and now we know that doctors are concerned and, and hence senior members of the royal family are moving up to be with her at Balmoral. Uh, we have had you know over the last few months the odd statement from Buckingham Palace about why she couldn't make this engagement or another engagement because of mobility issues but it is because you know a medical bulletin like this one today is so rare that it there is inevitably concern and that's been reflected in all these messages we've had from, from political and religious leaders. Yes, I think for the palace to say that doctors are concerned about her condition and she needs to be under medical supervision it is the really significant announcement today and is a cause of concern for everybody, uh, not, not just politicians, that there is something uh, happening here and members of the royal family are travelling to be with her, uh, whereas in the past we've been told she's just postponed or cancelled things because of these mobility issues which have quite often been put down to her age and her inevitable frailty at that sort of age. She's been in very good health for all of her reign. Uh, yes, she did have uh, surgery uh, for knee issues uh, going back nearly 20 years and, and, and a back problem at one point, but generally speaking she has been in remarkably good health during all these decades of, of service to the United Kingdom as the monarch. All right, Hugh, thank you very much once again. That's uh, Hugh Pym, our health editor, with his assessment. And we can also talk to our correspondent, Damien Chromaticus, uh, who is at uh, Buckingham Palace. And, and Damien, I was just reading out some of the um, messages uh, we've had from really all the political leaders saying that their, their thoughts and prayers are very much with the Queen at the moment. Yes, that's right, Ben. You were uh, just, as I heard you relaying those messages a couple of minutes ago, and I think what's notable, uh, a couple of things from that, is the way they have come from uh, the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, uh, but also all around the United Kingdom as well. So uh, you were just relaying, I think, uh, in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, saying, all of us feel uh, profound concern at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts are... Uh, are with the Queen and all the Royal, for Her Majesty the Queen and all the Royal Family at this time. Very similar sentiments uh, we've heard uh, from First Minister of Wales, Mark Drakeford, uh, and uh, also uh, we've heard from uh, Northern Ireland, from 
Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, uh, who said, my thoughts and prayers and that of the Democratic Unionist Party are with Her Majesty and her family at this time. And very similar sentiments uh, from the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, uh, from the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, all of whom sharing that concern, expressing that concern uh, and expressing their wish uh, and their hope for a recovery of the Queen and their best wishes and thoughts with her family as well. And Damien, you're at Buckingham Palace. Of course, normally earlier this week, the Queen would have been at Buckingham Palace to ask the new incoming Prime Minister to form a government. And, and uh, in fact, she did that at Balmoral. And there is the picture of her with Liz Truss appointing her as her 15th Prime Minister. I think it was the first Prime Minister to be appointed at Balmoral since 1885. Yes, that's right. A departure with what had happened uh, on every other occasion uh, that the Queen has invited uh, someone to form a government, a new Prime Minister. Uh, on this occasion, because she was on holiday uh, in Balmoral, because she's been there uh, and there were these concerns, we were told, for her mobility uh, in order to uh, take that into uh, notice. What was asked was that the political leaders travel there rather than her making the journey back here to Buckingham Palace as she uh, would have done previously. Uh, so Boris Johnson flew up very early in the morning, of course, uh, and after delivering his farewell speech, he tendered his resignation. Liz Truss, uh, who had just on Monday been confirmed as the winner of that election for a new Conservative leader, she was then invited in for that audience, that photo uh, that we all saw, uh, and was asked by the Queen to, invited by the Queen to form a new government. So those special arrangements, yes, exactly, were in place this week. Uh, and Liz Truss became the 15th Prime Minister uh, of the Queen's reign uh, and immediately has, has set about the business of forming her government. And today, as you were just saying, laying out what she now seeks to do about the issues facing the country, the energy uh, crisis in particular. Uh, and it was as she was doing that that the news from Buckingham Palace here uh, about the Queen's health came through to the political leaders in Parliament and, and all that reaction has followed. All right, Damien, thank you very much. That's uh, Damien Grammaticus there, our correspondent at Buckingham Palace with the latest from there. And we can also hear now from the Royal Correspondent Robert Hardman, who's been talking to my colleague Joanna Gosling um, a little earlier after that announcement from Buckingham Palace that the Queen is now under medical supervision. The palace don't normally um, issue uh, bulletins on the Queen's health unless, um, unless it's, it's significant. Um, I mean, the last time um, a, a, a sort of statement, as it were, came, came uh, out of the blue was to, to let us know um, earlier this year that she'd been diagnosed with COVID, but on the whole, the view is if um, if she's not uh, undergoing um, a sort of uh, some sort of hospital medical procedure, then these are private matters. So clearly, the fact that the um, the palace have seen um, fit to put out a statement that is it is grounds for concern. I mean, the, the fact she's comfortable, she's at Balmoral, where she's very much more relaxed at Balmoral than probably anywhere else. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's a positive. But I think, um, echoing the words of the Speaker, you know, I think all our thoughts mm -hmm. will be with her at this time. And Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. She's added, my thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. She has sort of pulled away from the public eye, hasn't she, because of those concerns around her mobility. But nonetheless, of course, she has been absolutely central uh, this week to what has been happening in terms of the politics and the new prime minister and the, the ceremony of that happening at Balmoral because of the concerns around her health. Yes, I mean... You know, this week we, we were reminded of our absolutely central role at the apex of our constitutional system. Uh, it is the Queen who appoints prime ministers and that she was very, very keen and determined to um, undertake that particular duty. Obviously, in recent months, we've seen the Prince of Wales taking on more and more of her regular duties. We saw, for example, um, him standing in you know, the state opening of Parliament uh, in representing her at the Commonwealth 
uh, day observation. Um, he's frequently now, uh, for several years now, um, taken her place at the Cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday. So, you know, little by little, he's taken on these key roles. But that central role of appointing the prime minister, which which goes to the absolute heart of our, our monarchy, she was determined to do that. And I think, you know, that was... It was a demanding day because it's not just a case of, of, of a handshake and a photo. You've got to uh, uh, say goodbye to one prime minister, welcome another. There's a lot of toing and froing. There are sort of cameras coming in and out. You know, it was a big day, I and mean, clearly, I think it, it has, um, you know, uh, uh, left her, um, as, as the palace saying, you know, under under medical supervision. So uh, I think you know, there will be all sorts of speculation, but I, I think the key. The two key things are that, that you know she is comfortable and she's um, she's where she she's she's happiest. Uh, Robert Hardman there speaking to my colleague Joanna Gosling. Let's just, uh, if you're just joining us, bring you that statement once again from Buckingham Palace um, that we had a little bit earlier on. And it simply says, after further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended that she remain under medical supervision. Uh, but the statement also says the Queen remains comfortable and she's at Balmoral and uh, Prince Charles is there with her. We gather um, that the Duke of Cambridge is also travelling to Balmoral to be with the Queen as well.